Welcome in, dragon folk. So happy to see you today. My name is Ashen Wings, and for this guide, we will be going over some beginner knowledge for everybody just getting into Guild Wars 2 for the first time. So put on your learning caps, and don't forget to subscribe. So I've been thinking about what to put into this guide and how to make it as short and sweet as possible. But if I'm being honest, there's a lot of little tips and tricks to learn while playing through the game. But the topics I chose for this video are some of the more important ones to keep in mind while you are leveling your character from level 1 to level 80 and even beyond. So let's get into this list of the top 5 tips for WoW veterans, I, I mean new players, in Guild Wars 2. Our first tip in this list is pretty important solely because you'll want to find that profession that really sticks with you. You'll be playing that profession for a while and really should be making sure you know exactly what the playstyle is like and the feel of the profession is before committing days or even weeks to leveling it to level 80. Then having to grind for armor and hero points as well. It's a, it's a lot to put into your character, and you're definitely going to want to be as prepared as possible. So the first tip is to try out your profession in PvP. Now, now hold on a second. I know what you're thinking, right? But, but I don't want to play PvP. I want a PvE experience first. Why do I need to play a PvP zone in this open world PvE environment? Listen. I'm not telling you to hop into a match right away unless you want to, of course, but if you look up in your menu bar to the top left, you'll see some crossed swords indicating your PvP world symbol. Even at level 1, you can go to the PvP lobby area where they essentially just hold you until you queue up for a match. In this lobby, your profession is actually boosted to level 80, and all traits and utility skills are unlocked for you. This little perk allows you to try out different builds you might want to find online, or even just to test the feel of the profession before bringing it out into the open world. You can buy any of your profession weapons from the trading post vendor here, and you can also go to the combat training waypoint to test your damage and abilities against training dummies. I highly recommend doing this if you are brand new to MMOs or even just brand new to Guild Wars 2, so that way you feel more comfortable. Then when you're ready to go back, just make sure to open that PVP menu again and choose exit. Now in this combat training, for the record, it doesn't exactly teach you how to properly time your dodges or how to best utilize your combo abilities because these training dummies are stationary, but as you get into the open world, you'll have a better idea of what you're looking for and more importantly, you'll know what your skills do and what to achieve as you get to level 80. Tip number two is none other than making sure to do your dailies. Now, as someone who often forgets about their dailies, please don't make the same mistake I did for several months in a row. These daily completionist achievements are great for getting you a little gold here and there, as well as some other goodies such as gear, Karma, which is just another currency in the game, and even writs of experience, which after collecting 20 of them, they will turn into a Tome of Knowledge, granting you one full level if you are below level 80, and Spirit Shards, which are used for crafting if you are above level 80. You just need to complete three of the 12 daily achievements, which can be found in the Achievements tab in the Hero panel, and by default, I believe every account has a completionist tab in their quest section on the top right of their screen. You can even choose what game type you want in order to complete these daily achievements, so you can get them all done in a couple games of PvP, or you can explore the open world and complete those, whichever you prefer. Just make sure to complete these every day that you can to get great rewards. I'd be roughly 150 gold richer had I just been doing these from the start. Tip number three also kind of ties into doing the dailies, which is map completion. Map completion is probably the best way for you to level from level 1 to 80 in an insane amount of time. 
Although, unless you're a fan of open-world objective games like Assassin's Creed, this may be a little tedious. But trust me, completing maps is super necessary. When you complete all the objectives on the map, you'll get tons of rewards such as crafting materials and gear, but most importantly, you'll be inching closer to getting 100% map completion in Central Tyria. 100% map completion will get you an item you will need to make an infamous legendary weapon when you are ready to start that journey, so it's worth it in the end. Not to mention, with the amount of different maps and zones to choose from, you can mix it up a bit and not stick to your race's specific zones. You want to go on vacation to the jungles of Maguma after a long few days in the icy cold shiver peaks? Go ahead and teleport to the Chaldean Forest and complete that zone as well. Doing this will really help make things interesting when going through those 80 levels. Now to elaborate more on the map completion, you have five different objectives on each map. Waypoints, which teleport the player to a spawn point on the map. Vistas, which are usually found up high and give a nice cinematic of viewing the land, much like the lookouts in Assassin's Creed. Just know there aren't any hay bales below these vistas, so watch your step. There are also points of interest, or POIs. These are just special points on the map designated to a town or a landmark. Now the next two objectives are probably the most important in your leveling journey, which are Renowned Hearts and Hero Points. Renowned Hearts are like side quests. Each one will give you a list of things to do to fill up that heart's progress bar. And when that bar is filled, the quest is complete and you get a pretty good amount of experience out of it, as well as some currency. Hero points will give you, well, hero points to spend on your traits and utility skills as you level up. You'll get a decent amount of hero points just for leveling, but you'll want to get these as you complete maps to get yourself ahead of the game when you reach level 80 so you can start putting points into your elite specializations. On to tip number four and probably the one most will be concerned about, which is inventory management. Inventory management is a plague amongst the players of Guild Wars 2, and with 20 slot bags being decently expensive for a new player, and only being limited to 5 bag slots, managing inventory can be a bit stressful. <laughs> Unless you want to pull out the good old MasterCard ASAP and buy bag slots, but I honestly don't suggest that. Hopefully, this tip will help you work with less and be just as efficient. As you level, you will get bags to put into those bag slots I was talking about earlier, but you'll want to get rid of those for bags that have more slots later on down the road. Even forking up enough silver to get a 12 slot cotton bag on the trading post is worth it, especially if you get four of them. Now onto the management part. When you open your inventory, you'll see that there are three little icons on the top right of the menu. The first icon allows you to deposit all the materials you have in your inventory into your material storage at your bank. If you see your inventory starts to fill up during your adventures, try pressing this button and see how much of the stuff gets sent away. This is important to press when you have just salvaged a lot of gear that you don't want or need. What I mean when I say salvage is that in many cities and towns, also when you level, you will get these things called salvage kits, either from vendors or they will be given to you as rewards for leveling up. These salvage kits are used to break down items in your inventory to crafting materials. Don't just go selling your armor and weapons just because your inventory is full. Make sure to salvage them first. And a side note, if you have any gear that has a yellow or orange border, which indicates a rare or exotic piece of equipment or item, and you don't want to use it, make sure to buy the Master Salvage Kit, which will also have a yellow border, and use those to break down that gear. That will give you rare materials such as globs of ectoplasm, which sound horrific, but are truly a delicacy of Tyrian cuisine. The next button is the Compact button. This simply allows you to keep your inventory neat and tidy, so you don't just have empty bag space all over the place. And lastly, the option button all the way to the right gives you quite a few, well, options to customize your inventory's UI. You can hide or show rarity. I leave mine on show all the time. No need to change. Hide or show new item highlights. I keep this on show as well, simply because when a new thing enters my inventory, it will light up and glow until I hover my mouse over it, and it helps me find stuff easier as well. 
Then the one big option that I suggest doing as soon as possible is to hide bags. Hiding your bags will make your inventory combine into what looks like one big bag. This is just more pleasing to the eye and makes more sense for me, but feel free to keep the bags separate if you wish. Also, don't forget to take advantage of the search bar up at the top of your inventory. This is very crucial for finding what items you need when you have 100 plus slots, so keep that in mind for the future. And now our final tip for the newbies themselves. Tip number five is to learn about your downed state. Each profession has its own downed state, which is a fight for your life combat mechanic that happens when your life total hits zero. You will have a dwindling health bar that will continue to go down until one of a couple things happens. Either you kill an enemy or you're healed back up on your feet, either by another player or by your four ability, which heals you for a little bit as the channeling of the ability occurs. Most people opt for the kill an enemy tactic when they are leveling because the creatures just tend to be easier to kill if your damage is decent. But as a fellow member of the Guild Wars 2 community, you must know that it's just common courtesy to help another player up when you can. Not only does it help the player continue on with their fight, but you also get experience for helping players up from their down state or even just resurrecting them entirely. But in case no one is around and you happen to die completely, just spawn back at your nearest waypoint, run back, and try again. Keep an eye on your armor durability though, because when you die, you will lose durability, which is indicated by this icon next to your health bubble. To remedy that, make sure to visit an anvil in a town or city and get that repaired and ready for your next battle. Well, that about sums it up. I would say the tips I've given you are enough to get you started pretty strongly on your adventures through Tyria. If you have any other helpful tips for beginners, please feel free to leave them down in the comments below. And while you're down there, make sure to subscribe to the channel and gently kiss that like button for me if you've enjoyed this content. I hope to be bringing you more and more guides such as this as I make my way through the expansions of Guild Wars 2, and I'm delighted to have you join me on this adventure. Feel free to check out my other social media on the link tree below, as well as check out our Patreon for some fun bonuses. Thank you again. Make sure to drink your water, eat your vegetables, and don't be a dick. And I'll see you all in the next video. Take care and nerd out.